series in one yeah. yeah, unfortunately, everyone that wants one of those is in this room. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make them by hand. <laughs> I'm going to duplicate them by hand and sell them completely black market. <laughs> because I don't have the rights to do that because Food Network technically owns the title. So I'm just going to do that in like a special briefcase and send them out via, via you know, email or something. So just watch for that. They're, they're going to be a little pricey. 
Actually, we know we're talking about that. Two things that I'm trying to get them to do is one, to do um, box sets by years, by, by, by seasons, and then also to release an entire uh, series to Netflix. But, but, but I don't think they're going to do it because now they've moved the entire um, series to primetime on Cooking Channel. Uh, where they intend to show it in chronological order all 13 years. So, of course, I realize that some of you may not have the channel. It's one of those fancy, fancy digital channels. Um, and so they're hoping that you'll want it so bad that you'll, you know, throw rocks at your local cable carrier. <laughs> now, rocks. Money. Money. Uh, okay, now, now you. A uh, bit of a non food question. Okay, non food questions are okay. Talk about um, how you got the job doing the one I love video. And oh, that Ryan video years and 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 years, and years ago? <laughs> no, dude, I can't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that was like 1985? Who can remember 1985? <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I can't. I was, no, I mean, it's too long of a story. But, you know, it was, it was definitely a smart move for, for me career-wise, but, um, nah, that's too long. Go ahead. Have I ever cooked rattlesnake? I have cooked rattlesnake. I didn't kill a particular snake. No, no, somebody gave it to me. It was like, here, they brought it at a signing and wanted me to sign it. And I said, well, I'm not going to sign it. I'm going to have to kill it. They killed it. I signed it. And the guy was like, well, I don't really want it now. Here. No, someone gave me rattlesnake meat, and I and I cooked it, and it tasted like poison chicken. <laughs> a little greasier. Anybody, anybody around here got any question? Nobody, nobody, nobody inquisitive up here. What do you want? <laughs> what do I like best about Iron Chef? That we can shoot a whole year's worth of shows in three weeks. <laughs> I like that a lot. I mean, it's two shows a day. It's like a 16 to 17 hour day, and then you, just, you do that every day, five days a week for three weeks, and then you're done. I like that. <laughs> and it's, it's so labor intensive, at the end of the day, I can't remember, I usually can't remember what the, the morning battle was. I'm like, <laughs> I'll talk to my wife on the phone, she's like, so what's the secret ingredient? <laughs> like the perfect secret keeper because I've already forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten who won Next Iron Chef, by the way, so don't think that you're going to ask me because I don't remember. You, sir. Uh, no, you. <laughs> you. Uh, so, uh, sort of two-part question. Um, do you get to taste any of the food on Iron Chef? And if so, what was your favorite and what was the worst thing that you've ever Well, the worst thing that I ever tasted on Iron Chef America was bad enough for me not to ever eat the food on Iron Chef America again. <laughs> I do not eat the food on Iron Chef America unless I'm sitting in for the chairman, which has only happened when he was on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> which, I might add, I turned down uh, on Dancing with the Stars. But if I had been on Dancing with the Stars, I would have won. <laughs> uh, so I had to do it then. But, uh, during the very first days of Iron Chef America, we did a mini-series, well, kind of a little set of four called Battle of the Masters. And um, it involved some of the chefs from the original um, series, Japanese series, including a guy named Sakai. You may remember if you were a fan of the first show. Well, Sakai decided it would be fun to make raw trout ice cream. <laughs> and I ate that. <laughs> well, he just blended the eyeballs in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, because there wasn't any obvious eyeball, but I could certainly detect on my palate some eyeball. Um, and I, did, I made the firm decision then and there, I will not be eating any more of this stuff. So since I'm not a judge, I eat the, I eat the food on Next Time Chef because I have to run the, the mediation and the judging and everything, so I have to do it to keep everybody kind of on the straight and narrow. Um, and that's tough to do, because sometimes the food's messed up. Uh, well, just, you know, not stuff you really want to eat, you know, it's like, ah, and her ingredient was sea slug. And I'm like, can we just pass? <laughs> Let her stay in. <laughs> but such is the nature of my job. Yes, ma'am? You, you wrote down a question. Sweet. You want to make some, some sock puppets with toe socks. 
No, because toe socks scare the hell out of me. <laughs> same for those shoes. <laughs> I'd rather watch a python eat a pig than watch somebody walk around in those shoes. So no, I can't say that, that that's okay. I mean, I guess. I mean, that's a sock. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, just, don't post any pictures, because I don't want to stop you. This thing's creeping out. Go ahead, ma'am. I know that you've had people in your life, like your chiropractor, be part of your show. Yeah, how people about, in my life get drunk on Good Eats. Family? Yeah, my, my family's all been on Good Eats except for my wife. My wife, who's the executive producer and therefore signs everybody's check, is a meaner. <laughs> she doesn't have to be on the show. She never wanted to be on the show. Man she writes the checks, nobody's going to push her around about it. But everybody else, a lot of other people in my family have. My daughter's been in 15 shows, I think, 15 episodes. Um, but I, I've kind of cut back on her because she's way too critical of me. <laughs> I mean, she could get away with that, you know, the crew likes that. You know, we'll, get a, we'll finish a take and, you know, Zoe will be like, Dad, I think you need another. <laughs> She doesn't tell me how to draw. No, she luckily won't fly or any of those things, luckily. Uh, the young man in the, uh, the green cap. Which you technically should not be wearing indoors, young man. <laughs> What's my favorite dish? Uh, round, flat, round. Okay. You mean food? I don't have a favorite food. I'm an omnivore. I'll, I'll eat almost anything, except trout ice cream. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Um, you have your nutmeg in your pocket. I lost my nutmeg two days ago. I lost my nutmeg actually in Milwaukee. I had my, my nutmeg was with me and, and then it was gone. I owe you? What do I owe you, dude? Sorry? Okay, buy my book. I got like a quarter. You want some money back? I did, I did have my nutmeg with me, and it was my special nutmeg, my favorite nutmeg, and now it's gone. I think somebody stole it. I think someone stole my nutmeg. So if anybody brought one, I'd be happy to have it. All right, can you, can you come up and bring me a nutmeg, ma'am? Please? We'll get into why you have nutmeg with you <laughs> later, some other time. Just leave me having nutmeg, because it's going to feel nutless without it. <laughs> Did you bring me a little bit of grater, too, for the nutmeg? I'll just use my tooth. That's what I used to do. Is this... oh, I just want one. Oh, well, here. I'll open the pack. Come on. <laughs> Take that, you thief, whoever you are. Thanks. You, boy, speak up. What? Has anybody else's cooking inspired me? Yeah, pretty much everybody's. I mean, um, I, I grew up in, in, um, in, the, in the kitchen of grandmothers and, and my mom and stuff like that, so those, those, were, those were my original inspiration, you know, um, in, in the early days. And I would still say that just family cooks are, are still my favorite cooks. My large. Yes, ma'am. How did I get the the what? The waffleator. What was the waffleator? You mean the the waffler, the person? Oh, the thing that eats the waffles. It didn't really eat the waffles. It was, it was fake. We pulled a panel out of the thing and we put in this thing and, and it was fake. We just built it. I'm sorry. But, but I'll, I'll get a real one. I'll get a real one. Okay? Don't, don't count at me. No. Don't count. Please don't count. Yes, ma'am. What do I make that's better than my mom's? Since. Uh, no. Um, what do I make better than my Almost everything. Uh, better, better than my mom. Uh, 
My mom was able to cook right up until the time that I went to culinary school. And then as soon as I went to culinary school, she suddenly decided she couldn't cook anymore. And she calls me up to ask me how to boil water and stuff like that. I think she just is mad that I haven't called. But she's still a pretty good cook. She's, she's a recipe follower. Her, her great gift was timing things. I mean, she was a great entertainer. She could put on a dinner for 40 people and make it look really super easy. You know? But all the food, you know, is all for you know, recipes, established recipes. She was pretty good at it. She still is. Anyone else? You, sir. What advice? Yeah, we'll do, the, no, we'll do the little kid first and then the big kid behind her. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know you're the um, best cook in the, in the state, right? Do I know that I'm, that I'm the best cook in the state? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so so Thank you, young man. I'll pay you later. I'll pay you nothing. All right, big, big, big kid behind. What, what advice would you give to a big kid who is aspiring to be a reality TV host? You want to be a reality TV host? I do. Yeah. Why you can't get a real job? <laughs> okay. Here, here's what I would say. If you want, to, I don't know many reality TV people. Okay. I do. First thing I'd start to do is I'd start hoarding stuff. That would be number one. I would hoard stuff. Um, I would try to probably learn some skills like uh, like uh, hand fishing, you know, like you're catching fish. Um, move to a swamp, open a pawn shop. <laughs> Marry a midget if you can, or, or, or a couple of midgets. That would be you know, that, that will find you. You'll really lay the basis for a reality TV series and breed copiously. That would also. Be I leave out anything? Yes, just about do it. Have you done any of those things already? Uh, I got the midgets. <laughs> okay. Well, that's. I mean, that's a start. By the way, I think they like. <laughs> so, and if they would work in a pawn shop in the swamp, that would be best. Okay. You? Yes? Recently on Twitter, I saw that you were talking to people about what to give up in their diet that was really bad. Yes, I, was ta I talked often on Twitter about things that are bad. <laughs> what was the hardest thing for you to never give up? The hardest thing ever to give up? And food wise, yeah. Oh, diet, diet soda. Yeah, diet soda was like worse than way worse than smoking, because I smoked about 20 years ago, and quitting smoking was easy compared to giving up diet soda. Diet soda was, I, I turned into a, a horrible human being. It was serious. I mean, it was, it was really rough, because all the culture around you is trying to get you to drink more of it. You know, it's not like cigarettes that everybody says are bad. You know, people, people don't, don't do that. So, you know, it's, it's hard because of that. Society accepts the evil of diet soda. So, huh? You... Is there a dish I haven't mastered yet? Uh, one out of every 10 pots of rice I make is really bad. And I don't know what happens because, I mean, I do the same thing every time and then every 10th one just becomes a solid white mass of glue. And I don't know why, so what I do is I just automatically throw out the every 10th pot. I don't even open the lid, I just throw it away because it's gonna be bad. And I still make amazingly bad coffee by lunch. I don't know why. I steal my coffee on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just not great. I, I try. I do. Um, I just have real high standards. It's one of those things where I'm, my taste is so much better than my abilities that I, you know, I, I can't seem to catch up with myself. You know? but, I mean, I should get a job at you know, Starbucks or something. <laughs> but I don't want to get the piercings. <laughs> Do I have a favorite restaurant in this area? No, because I almost never get to eat here. Because on things like book tours, you don't get to stay long enough to actually eat anything. So I'll steal something off of a room service tray in the hotel. <laughs> yeah, I'll go up and down the halls until I find part of a sandwich. <laughs> and eat that because I won't get back in time for room service. All the restaurants will be closed. And I gotta, I gotta fly out of here at six in the morning. So not bizarre. the coins. Uh, what? Not thirteen coins. What? <laughs> 13? Oh yeah, where is that? Uh, Boren. Denny and Boren. And airport. Okay, I understand something. I don't know where the hell I am. <laughs> I know there's a bunch of water and it's in wind and rain. I don't know where I am. I know kind of where I am. And I know where I'm sleeping. And I kind of know the route between the two, but I don't know where that is. But when we meet later, maybe you can tell me where it is. And I'll go there before I go home to the place that I'm going. Don't go? Bad? 
Is it bad? <laughs> we can like do the Jerry Springer show. Because you say it's great and she says it blows. <laughs> Alright, so see, this is what happens to me every time I go out. Yes, sir. Bearded one. Did you used to work at, at Starbucks? No? Because you got the metal work there for it. You're bad at coffee, too. Well, perhaps you should have conquered the coffee before you got the piercings. Go ahead. Got it. Oh, I just I made that up. <laughs> no, that was one of those things on Good Eats that was a complete lie. <laughs> there have been a fair number of those, uh, for storytelling reasons. Um, I, the truth is, is I never really had much of a southern accent. I, I was born in California. Um, and, no, oh, don't. <laughs> but my, my, my mom and my dad were both from North Georgia, and they, they, they moved to California after any moon, had me, raised me until I was eight years old in North Hollywood, and then returned me uh, to where they made deliverance. <laughs> why I'm still not really 100% okay. <laughs> but because of that, I never really had an accent. Do you want to get a southern accent? I mean, I can teach you how. Let me give you a hint. Nobody in the South talks like Paula Dean. Nobody. <laughs> there are a lot of southern accents. None of them sound like that. <laughs> we down there, we're like, where is she from? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Your role has mentioned that he's been mistaken for you. Christopher Campbell said he's been mistaken. That's the, the guy that, that is the publisher of Cook's Illustrated. Really? Because I'm so much better looking than that. <laughs> and he could be like my nerdier older brother, maybe. But I have not been mistaken for Christopher Campbell. No, I have not. I've never even met him, actually. So, but no, I haven't been mistaken for him. Brad Pitt, a couple times. <laughs> yes, you there, boy. Um, which Iron Chef is your favorite? Which Iron Chef is my favorite? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not going to fall into that trap. We're all precious little snowflakes. Beautiful human beings, fabulous artists. They're all wonderful. <laughs> Are you going to see me compete on Art Chef America? Not on your life. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because I don't want anybody to get a shot at my job. <laughs> because if I'm down there, someone else would have to be up where I am. And someone might realize, hey, this is easy. <laughs> what? Make, well, no, but I'll tell you this. If I was going to compete on Art Chef America, if, if, I was to compete on Art Chef America, on Art Chef America, I would call out Morimoto. I would compete against <laughs> But I'd make sure there wasn't a piece of seafood in the house. <laughs> we'd be like, and today's secret ingredient is beanie wee! <laughs> and then I would mop the floor. Because <laughs> he'd be like, oh! A fish! No fish, buddy, not today. <laughs> no kelp. None of that. And no knots <laughs> No knives, no fish, no kill. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, I haven't left Food Network. I'm, I'm still on Food Network. I have my contract for the last few years. So I haven't left there, nor am I dying, because the way you're talking is... As far as I know. You mean like I have close buds? Well, you know, we have a clubhouse. We have a secret clubhouse. <laughs> we have our, uh, you know, clubhouse where we all go and meet and hang out. I'm like, hey, Rich, what up? <laughs> you know, um, and we cook and, you know, laugh and then we go home. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We're always together on the holidays. <laughs> I work with them, you know, and, and 
the rest of them, by and large, don't really talk to me very much. Aww. I got to carry Emerald's golf bags one time. <laughs> that, was, that was about as close as I got. So, just the way it goes. Yes, sir? What's my favorite motorcycle? Oh, so many motorcycles, so little time. Um, <laughs> well, I've currently got, I, I, didn't, I don't have as many motorcycles as I used to, because now I have airplanes. And airplanes take a hell of a lot more money to run than motorcycles. <laughs> And, and I, I've recently become a trader. I, I no longer own a BMW now. I ride a Ducati. Because every man in his life should have a fast Italian, just once. <laughs> hey, somebody up there? What question? Yeah, you. What's my favorite episode of Good Eats? Well, my my favorite would be. I I don't think about what I like uh, in the final show, but I would have to rate it by how much fun I had making it. Um, so I would have probably two that were tied. Um, we, uh, I did a show that my, my daughter was in about fish, where I played myself as an old man and she played my granddaughter. And that was a whole lot of fun to do because she and I got to work together and I got to be like an old man with all this latex stuff. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to be ugly old man. <laughs> Um, and then the other one that was a whole lot of fun to do is we, we did one, you probably won't understand the reference, uh, but it was, it was about meat pies. And it was a takeoff, was a takeoff on, a, on a musical and also a movie called Sweeney Todd, uh, which I'm pretty sure is the only time on Food Network anybody's made a show with direct references to cannibalism. And I got away with it. I thought that was pretty cool. We'll take a few more, go ahead. You have an eyeglass issue? Yeah. Um, I've got 13 or 14 pairs. 13 or 14 pairs? Wow. How many pairs of eyeglasses do I actually have? Uh, not as many as you might think, because I lose or destroy them. <laughs> um, usually while they're still on my face. I lead a very kind of rough and tumble life. Um, I probably have 10 pairs of glasses. I'm betting. But, but I really only wear like 30, by and large. And I, and I like really, really old ones. These were made in the 1940s. So I like, I like old class. I like old stuff, by and large. At my age, I like anything older than me. <laughs> because it just makes me feel better. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so one episode you did um, about super tasters and how you spray paint your tongue blue and then you count all the dots. Well, this guy made me do it because I'm like the pickle. I went away. <laughs> I didn't do anything like that. I didn't tell anybody to spray paint their tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about picky eaters and stuff like that. I talked about picky eaters and that yeah. picky eaters may or may not. Picky eaters may actually have a different array of, of, of taste buds or they may just be difficult people. <laughs> <laughs> like vegetarians. <laughs> Go ahead, so he made you paint your tongue? We had something of... Oh, spray painting your tongue? What, what yeah, I never said anything about counting the dots on your tongue. You're confusing me with some kind of like pay-per-view thing or something. Ever, did, did you tell her that you just wanted to do that? Maybe that you watched Family Guy. That's what you Peter Griffin, is that his name? Yeah. Are, you, are you swearing at me that his name is Peter Griffin? Yeah. This conversation is over. <laughs> this, that just explained absolutely everything. If you had a dog named Brian, then I just... That's his middle name. <laughs> then, are you married? Not You're getting married. You really want to rethink that. <laughs> First thing you're going to do is you're going to have a kid named Stewie. <laughs> then there's going to be the epicac, and I just don't know what that is. Okay, I'm, I'm done with TV shows. Yes. Sir. Yes. Did I ever feature a food on Good Eats that I don't actually like, but I thought would make a good show? No, but I did feature a food on Good Eats that I can't eat. Um, I have a very, very strong intolerance to oysters. Um, I, I, I love them, and I ate them until I turned about 30, and then I turned 30, my body all of a sudden said, no more of those. Um, and so I can't eat oysters, um, even though I really want to. Um, and, and so we made an oyster show, but I faked it. I faked eating it. 
Uh, but that's that's really the only thing. I, I don't. I never got around to making shows about foods I actively don't like, like beef liver. I just I don't like beef liver very much. And, and oddly enough, no one wanted a show about it. So. <laughs> Why? Well, because it's not good eats, okay? <laughs> Nobody can convince me that it is. Yes, ma'am? So, we're coming up to the holiday season. Where are you, like, videoing me for your, for what? For YouTube? Is that, is that what you're doing? <laughs> your dad's a food scientist, so are you trying to bust me here? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so, do you have to do a lot of cooking for your family? Do I do a lot of cooking uh, for my family on the holidays? Yeah. Heck yeah, I do. You should have my turkey sometime. <laughs> well, I've got new dates. There's going to be a new Good Eats uh, Thanksgiving special, one hour special, starting in November, where we invent yet a new way to do turkey that we hadn't done before. And it's actually, it's really groovy because it's a roast butterfly turkey that cooks in an hour. And it's a groovy show because it's an hour special and there's only one application or recipe in the whole show and it's for the entire Thanksgiving meal all in one master recipe. Give me four days. Man. The turkey agent takes takes some time, but everything happens basically in one day. It's really cool. Why the grape juice commercials? Because I freaking love Welch's grape juice. <laughs> you know, usually people, celebrities, decide on endorsements based on who calls them up and offers them the most money. Uh, I base mine mostly on stuff I really like uh, and want to get for free. <laughs> Always, I've always been a fan of that juice because um, I, they're owned by, it's a co-op, it's actually owned by the farmers, and, and they, they're fanatical. Um, they, when, the, when the harvest comes, it's really cool. I actually have been there and seen this before, years ago. They, they actually will only uh, squeeze these grapes when they reach a certain bricks level, sugar content levels, like 16 bricks, and they have to squeeze them within eight hours of harvesting them, or they don't get to be juice. And so it's, it's like, these people are just maniacally fanatical about these, these grapes and getting them just right and squeezing them. But there's nothing in the bottle but grapes. And I don't think there are any things left in America that you just say, it's kind of one ingredient. Uh, so I kind of like that. And it's really good with gin. <laughs> I tried to sell that Welch's on a whole a gin and juice campaign. You know, gin and juice kind of thing. <laughs> no. no. Yes. We'll do like three more questions. Go ahead. Are you reading off of her page? Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making it. People have had a difficult time um, with the marshmallow uh, recipe because. Yeah, because their mixers are pathetic and underpowered. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we didn't test them with pathetically underpowered mixers. We probably should have, but we, we, we've kind of come to the conclusion that the, the standard small motor KitchenAid has kind of become the standard. You have that and it burned it up? You've actually had known people that burned out their mixers on my marshmallows. Then they screwed up something. <laughs> Because we, we, have, we have found that certain, especially like Sunbeam or other lesser mixers, won't make them properly, but we haven't had reports of anybody actually burning one out. Well, no, actually burning up any mixer. I, I, I would have found out about that. Somebody would have yelled at me directly. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I need to talk to that person about their procedural. We find that about, you know, we, we, my thing is to get, and it's like the recipes in this book, in, in, the, in Good Eats 3, and in, in all the Good Eats books, have been completely rebuilt from scratch. That's something I want everybody to know. If you've been a fan of the show, um, and you've saved up recipes that you've downloaded from foodnetwork.com, throw them away, unless you have notes on them, and use the ones in the books, because we took every single application, stripped it down, and rebuilt it from scratch for the books, so that now we should have like 99% success rate. I, I can't make 100% because some folks are, are just morons. <laughs> it's like there was a lady, honest to gosh, there was a lady who lived in California who attempted to smoke a salmon in a cardboard box. And, what do you say? That's cool. <laughs> no, you can smoke a salmon in a cardboard box. I made a show about it. But she did it with charcoal in her apartment. <laughs> I can't. 
can't make up for it. There are no disclaimers in the world. All right, two more questions. You, Matt, with a Kermit the Frog, so prominently displayed. Uh, what are your top three visual aids from the show? My top three visual aids from Good Eats. Um, define visual aid. <laughs> Oh, those are props. Those, okay, props. Um, I would say um, mirrors, uh, especially in the last few years on Good Eats, we've done crazy things with mirrors that allow us to actually change shots without moving the camera by having mirrors come in and out of the frame. I'm pretty sure nobody's ever done that before, um, or at least you know, outside of public access television. Um, maps. Maps, definitely maps. Maps that come in from all kinds of crazy places would, would be a big one. When in doubt, you know, maps. And uh, puppets. Yeah, puppets. And, 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 and references to the movie Jaws. <laughs> Very few people have managed to count all of them. There are over 70 uh, in the life of Good Eats, uh, direct rips from, from Jaws, which is my favorite movie. Don't ask me why, it's a long story. All right, you're the last question, Madam, right there. Go. Did you, do you pilot your plane all on your tour? Or just yeah, I'm the guy behind the. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And today was. Yeah. <laughs> today, today was a little wacko, huh? Who, who, who said that? Oh, I have a um, what I'm bringing on tour of the fleet. Um, <laughs> um, it's a, um, a 1979 Cessna 414A with Ram 7 inversions, of course. So uh, pressurized twin AC. It's pretty luxurious for me. No jets, because I'm only a cable celebrity, not a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you're really gonna be the last one just because yeah, you. Go. Okay. I love your chili powder. Thank you. Oh, when you're cooking it? Don't burn it. <laughs> when you roast the chili peppers, do it on the grill, do it outside. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I will sign just about anything uh, that you bring. Uh, you know, I sent a lot of spoons, I sent a lot of mixers, you know, stuff like that's fine. Um, go ahead and, and give your ferret that last pet because I'm gonna have to break that little neck. Um, so I'll see you soon. Um, bye. Thank you so much. Let's give him one last round of applause.